The foundation for the WA Museum Impact Circle Grant funded a collaboration between the WA Museums, Regions and the Science Collection Departments, supporting Gunwari Maya Gascoigne Aboriginal Heritage and Cultural Centre to develop a legacy education program which focused on the region's Mugurgura, also known as the Dawson's Barring Bee, alongside enhancing the visitor's experience in the interpretive centre. These are Dawson's Burrowing Bees. Their Yingara name is Mugudgura or Jiribadi, because I was born and bred in Carnarvon. When I was growing up, I used to ride horses out to the beach and like this time of the year, we could hear this buzzing for miles and we knew they were bees, but we didn't know what sort of bees they were. So we used to just ride around them. I'm Nick Tatarnik, Curator of Entomology at the Western Australian Museum. And I've been interested in animals ever since I was a little kid. My first exposure to the Dawson burrowing bee was actually reading about it in a textbook. So these bees are a classic example of an interesting mating system. And so they use what's called alternative mating strategies. So you have large males and small males, and the large males fight over access to females, and the small males, instead, they hang around the periphery of the colony, and they try to mate with females on the outside. So evolutionary standpoint, this is a really weird mating system, and that's why it's attracted so much attention. See, the white ones are the females and brown ones are the males. So they're, they're, they're also one of the biggest bees in the world. They don't produce honey. They lay a grub in their burrows just like a body grub, which is a delicacy to the Aboriginal people. So after mating season, you know, a few, well, maybe three, four months after that, they go and dig them up, dig the burrows up and put the burrows in the coals and eat the grub. All the females are in the burrows, so the ones that are flying around would have mated already because they only mate once and that's it. Dawson's bees, these are solitary bees. You might see them as a big colony. You see tens of thousands of them all living together, but it's actually a whole bunch of individual nests. Each female is making her own nest. They're all working for themselves and they're all building to themselves with no help. But the ones in the burrow haven't been mated. Because they don't produce honey, they get, they do get their honey from the bluebell and the poverty bush, but the honey goes into the burrows to feed the, the grub. In, in Australia, a lot of the insects, their life cycles are intimately tied to the plants around them. So with bees, they really come out when the flowers are out. And with the Dawson's bees, they have a very short window of opportunity. So they come out in July, but they only have three months and that's their time to mate and to feed and to produce young. So if we want to live alongside these bees, it's really important that we seek local knowledge about where these bees are living. You know, you, we can go out and drive across a clay pan and not realize that there are these nests under there. We could have tens of thousands of bees under the ground and we might be compacting the soil without knowing it. Or we might start digging, you know, thinking you're gonna build, you know, build something and just, you know, out of ignorance, not know that you're actually digging in a colony of bees. So it really helps to know from the people who live here where the bees are, where it's okay to dig, and then we can just live, you know, happily next to them. The bees are quite fine with us walking up and looking at them and enjoying their presence during their breeding season. And it would be nice for us to just be respectful and let them have their space and share the landscape with them. If we respect our wildlife, our wildlife will respect us back. You know, when you connect to country, country connects back to you.